Good morning, Nigeria. Welcome to Social Media Trends. My name is Ina Peters. T -t Today on the show, we'll be discussing social media reactions concerning the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Um, so, first things first, President Muhammad Buhari, via his official Twitter handle, released a statement, but we're only going to be taking some of those tweets. Um, at M. Buhari tweeted, it is... I believe um, if we can have the very first tweet. It is against this background that I have received the order of the Code of Conduct Tribunal directing me to suspend the Chief Justice pending final determination of the cases against him. Okay, so this is actually the first tweet. Fellow Nigerians, a short while ago, I was served with an order of the Code of Conduct Tribunal issued on Wednesday, 23rd January 2019, directing the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Walter Kanu Samuel Onogen, from office pending final determination. Moving on. Of the cases against him at the Code of Conduct Tribunal and several other for relating to his alleged breach of the Code of Conduct for Public Offices. It is no secret that this government is dissatisfied with the alarming rate in which the Supreme Court of Nigeria, under the oversight of Justice Walter Onogen, has serially set free persons accused of the most dire acts of corruption, often on mere technicalities. Since there is nothing the executive arm can do after the apex court of the land has spoken on any matter, several of these individuals walk free among us today. Now, of course, this is what led to him finally saying he has suspended the chief judge of chief justice of Nigeria. Okay, so after President Muhammad Bari put this tweet, social media went wild is the word and we definitely have some of those reactions from twitter and instagram and it's just you know a lot a whole lot now some people are for this and some others are, for, are not you know in support of this move now let's check some of those reactions now there was a particular tweet hashtag that was also trending which i really find interesting and that is the hashtag tyranny buhari now we're going to look at some of the reactions first on twitter and the first one at Prince CBN tweeted, Today is indeed a sad day to be a Nigerian and to be a lawyer. I haven't felt this much sadness in my soul for a long time. I feel surreal typing this. The hashtag tyranny Buhari just buried the judiciary. Okay now, so we're going to take a short break and when we return more on the social media trends, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. Joining me, I have two gentlemen, Uzoma Wachuku and Zikora Okwo Wenwa. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so basically you guys are here to help me understand what is happening on social media. Okay, are we ready? I think okay, so as we, I was, I was reading the tweets to you, um, at Prince CBN Twitter, today is indeed a sad day to be a Nigerian and to be a lawyer. I haven't felt this much sadness in my soul for a long time. I feel surreal. Type in this the hashtag tyranny buhari just buried the judiciary what do you have to say about this particular tweet um well the the tweet is reflective of the the times that we are in and um what happened yesterday would never previously have been imagined and i think i can i can share the feelings of the poster of this tweet prince of Ogun. and it's indeed a sad day to be a nigerian Okay, um, let's take the next tweet, please. At Demola Rewaju tweeted, three years ago in January 2016, the PDP digital media family trended, hashtag tyranny Buhari, and some thought we were doing too much. There's nothing we've predicted about this man that hasn't turned out to be wrong or nothing. And if anything, in fact, he has surprised us exceedingly sometimes. Okay, <laughs> now. So I guess they see the future in this one, huh? Not only the future, it's also um, the run-up to the 2015 election had people stating exactly the things that were going to be happening. That the president was not going to obey court orders, the president was not going to defer to the law as democracy demands. And so it's exactly what's playing out and there is no difference in the way that he has moved so far. Especially the attempt to remove the CJN has actually, I, I think this is the height of it so far. Okay, um, moving on. At Dr. Joe Abba also tweeted, as a lawyer, I find this whole saga to be truly sad. 
In my humble opinion, the Chief Justice, the National Judiciary, Judicial Council, the Code of Conduct Tribunal, and Mr. President have each not acted correctly. However, I am a non-practicing lawyer, and my law is rusty. I could be wrong. And what are your opinions on this particular? Well, well, I might not be able to seen as, you know, a neutral person. Exactly say what leadership is. I think that leadership is all about responsibility. President Buhari holds the highest office in the land. And if there is anybody who should be more attuned and act more in sync with the law of the country, I think it is the president. If the president cannot respect the very law from which he derives his power as president from, then what is the fate of our country? I think the trend is really more disturbing than many people see it because the judiciary is the only arm of government that has no political considerations, has no partisan leanings. You expect, the average Nigerian expects to get justice from judiciary. So if the judiciary is dragged and subjected, the apex law of legal officer of the country is in such a manner, in such a manner, then what hope for the common Nigerian? I think it's really, really terrible. Sorry, I wanted to say something about this. In addition to what he has said, this tweet is an attempt to be neutral in a point where you cannot possibly be sitting on the fence. This is unlawful. As a lawyer, you have to know that. If I am reading this tweet, I would prefer to read it from down. You are a non-practicing lawyer, your law is rusty. It means your opinion should be null. And I am very particular about this because I respect the tweeter. I, I think I know him in person. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to be, at this time, speaking from the side of a lawyer, it does not make sense that an arm of government is unilaterally removing another arm of government. It raises a lot of questions. That should be where the question should start from. If in times of oppression you keep quiet, you pretend to be neutral, you pretend to sit on the fence, you are wrong. Just you a, are just wrong. And at some point we have to see the truth. Okay, uh, moving on to the next tweet. At U10 Akaji also tweeted, the story will be told that at a time when hashtag tyranny Buhari was busy burying democracy in Nigeria, a VP who was supposed to be a son and a pastor did nothing to stop it. Rather, he consented to it fully. Um, we also have at M. Buhari tagged, Prof Professor Oshibajo tagged, at um, Segaling tagged, and a whole lot of others. What do you have to say about this tweet, especially, you know, talking about the vice president, him being a son and a pastor as well? Um, with the number of SANs around the president, with the value of people around the president, especially the vice president, the chief justice, the attorney general, and a lot of other people, I am surprised that the government has gone the way it has gone. Um, we expect that the, gov the president should get more quality legal advice, but a lot of things he has dealt with, he's dealt with only gray areas in the law. And it's quest it brings questions a lot of times. For example, um, there's also the question of the validity of the appointment of the new essay of the new CJN. The law provides a procedure for the appointment of a CJN, and the, that it, it was an a recommendation by the NJC, first, that the office of the CJN is vacant, and then this is who should fill the office. Then secondly, there should be an approval by a majority of the Senate. You do not appoint CJNs by executive orders. So the first thing is that the appointment of the CJN, the present CJN, is not even legal. So if you're going to be suspending or noggin, you are you are just saying that if, for example, we assume that your suspension is valid, the office is vacant. And this tweet was just to show that if we have so many SANs around the president, there is Sage, there is the vice president, there is the attorney general, there is Festus Kiyamo, at some point we should get good advice. We should stay within the ambit of the law. We should not keep dancing with the darkness around the law and the loopholes. It's dangerous and it's setting dangerous precedents. Because we're looking at governors waking up some morning and just suspending all the CJs. It is dangerous. It is something that we should not look forward to. Okay, what about you, Uzoma? Do you have any contribution? Um, well, it's, the, the, it looks like we are, we are saying the same thing again. Some months ago, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, said, and I quote, that President Buhari does not benefit from sound legal advice. It's not about the plethora of people with legal degrees around him. What is the disposition of the person, the individual, to the law? Does President Buhari see law in his consciousness 
as one of the basic pillars on which society as a social construct is built, the evidence before us suggests otherwise. So, if uh, Vice President Zubanjo is a senior advocate of Nigeria, he's a pastor, he's a professor, which makes him an academic. But does this administration reflect any of those experiences? I think not. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, moving on to some other tweets. Um, at Smith Vin Vinci also tweeted, your M man crush Monday, Buhari, just changed the chief justice of Nigeria or not get like someone that's changing SIM card from SIM 1 to SIM 2. The fact that Buhari still has supporters shows that if some people ever get back into the Garden of Eden, they will still eat the forbidden fruit. Now, we know that while in the midst of all of this, there are still people uh, that are still supporting President Buhari's decision. What do you guys have that to say about come that? That should come as no surprise. Hitler had followers. Even the Jews faced with the option of choosing Barabbas, a known terrorist, chose Barabbas and said Jesus but should be Jesus. crucified. I'm not so all throughout human history, dictators have always had their followers. But let me make something categorically clear. Tyrants operate with two principles. One is terror, and the other is dissemination of false information. These two instruments. The false information out there is that President Buhari is fighting corruption. That is the narrative that is being sold to other people. But what we see is a gradual institutionalization of terror, an attempt to bruise and batter the psyche of the Nigerian people, an attempt to leave them completely dehumanized. As an individual, as an ordinary citizen, if the CJN can be suspended like a secondary school student, what is my fate? Where do I stand? We are all victims. And until we stand up to speak against this, we could be next. Okay, so now, um, like I said earlier, we also had some reactions. You know, there are also some um, tweets or, you know, just messages online that are actually in support of President Buhari's decision. So if we can just move to those comments, I think it would be great. I think we get to see some of them, especially on um, Instagram. Okay, now at Mobiles, um actually commented, but CJN is guilty of this. Don't know why people, people like, like celebrating thieves, I believe that's what she was supposed to say. Mm -hmm. How can you forget to declare all your assets? Simonio, what do you guys have to okay. say about this? Um, about the CJN uh, um, agreeing to the charges against him. What are the charges exactly? There were mistakes in the declaration of his assets. And in a later declaration, he cured the mistakes. What is he charged with? If he says he's corrupt, for example, and um, the president is acting on the premise that the, um, that the CJN is corrupt, it means that he must have been convicted by a competent court. There are questions about the competency of the CCT to try the chief justice of Nigeria. There are questions about the jurisdiction of the CCT over this matter, for example, in the instances that it has held. The case is still sub judice. So the CJN cannot be, obviously, he, ca he obviously cannot be guilty if he is still being tried in court. The court has to say he is guilty for him to be assumed to be guilty. Okay. So let's start from there. And if we go, if we go for that, if he is saying, oh, see money, is it a crime to be rich? If there is money in your account, what is supposed to be in an account is money. So I don't know how it's a crime to have money in your account. Okay, um, at Amira underscore Sani also says, it is sad that the one in the highest position to uphold justice is found to be corrupt. What Sada is seeing people, especially young Nigerians, be on his side, even when he did not deny the charges against him. It's hard, it's hard to keep on hoping that Nigeria would get better, and that's very sad. I believe this, this message is actually for the both of you. For the, the, <laughs> the message there is clearly stemming from a poor understanding of what the issues are. So what is a better In understanding? In the previous tweet, the person said guilty. Now, guilty is a strong word. Yes. And as far as I'm concerned, I might not be a lawyer, but the term guilty means that you have been convicted. Until you, you can be indicted. There's something called indictment. You can be indicted, you can be accused, it can be alleged that you committed an offense. But when you say guilty, it's an indication of guilt. I don't think we are there yet. Now, 
determination of guilt has to be situated within a legal framework. What does the law say? If we say, if we just say, okay, you are guilty, it means that anybody can just wake up and say anybody else is guilty. Yes. And, you know, that's the end. So, is the, saying that he is guilty, is that sufficient? All I'm saying is, let due process be followed. I'll be the last person to support any act of corruption. But again, we should strive to attain a level of consistency. I saw the way the president reacted to the Ganduje video. And rather, he started talking about what kind of technology. He was talking about um, why couldn't he get somebody to collect money from him and all that. And in the case of Onoga, you said the CCT recommended the suspension. Now, the question is this. On this issue, His Excellency President Buhari wants to be seen as somebody who has respect for the orders of the CCT. This is a man who has brazenly defied courts that have granted jail to Sambo Dasuki, the former NSA, calls for the release of, um, what's his name, yeah, Sheikh Zagzaki, the leader of the Shite movement, he had been set aside. Deji Adeonju, as we speak, is languishing in Kano prisons, despite court orders for his removal. Why can't Mr. President be consistent? Okay. Um, Kato underscore reborn also commented on Instagram. Buhari responded faster to this case than that of Ganduje and the chief of staff who caught grass for over 200 million naira. We know this issue is politically motivated in case the election goes the other way against APC. But still, the suspended CJN should clear himself if he thinks he isn't guilty. How exactly did you earn that much? It's all about clearing yourself nothing can be added to it, to this not even a punctuation mark i think he's spot on he's okay spot in, on. sorry in addition he's to that on. we're not arguing whether the cjn is guilty or not that is not subject that is for the courts to decide okay we're just going to look at what are the surrounding issues that's what we're looking at here so we're not saying whether he's guilty or not guilty even if he is guilty there is a procedure for dealing with there are procedures for punitive measures there are procedures even if you want to remove the cjn there are conditions he has to satisfy even a guilty man that is sentenced to death has rights. Those rights exist for you and I. If we arbitrarily just start picking up people and dealing with them the way we like, because, because the president is presuming that he is above the law, that he is above the rule of law, and he is above reproach. That's what he's saying by actions like this. As he pointed out, there are a lot of court orders he has refused to abide by. There are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of seeming corruption cases that he has refused to act as swiftly as this petition came. And in three days, he was before the CCT. It was crazy. And the CCT adjourned. And the CCT not, adjourned. They had adjourned. And so the day adjourned. adjourned and go ahead to make a ruling on which... So, and let's not, let's not forget that the chairman, if you're coming to a critique, you must come with quick, um, clean hands. Mm -hmm. The chairman of the CCT, the present chairman, has a case before the EFCC. He's being investigated. So if we're applying the same rules that we're applying to the CJN, that man should not be sitting. He should not be the chairman of the CCT. So if we're saying that fighting corruption is not just about personal vendetta, it's about institutions, it's about systems, it's about consistency. If we cannot keep these things in check, if we cannot be consistent across board, depending on who's not minding whose ox is God, then let's not pretend. Okay, at um, Eugene23101 also commented. This is a long one. Buhari did well. We all know the judiciary system is flawed in Nigeria. That why a well-known criminal will be let out on bail after engaging one or two sands. Let him remain suspended while investigation takes place. Nobody's bigger than the law. How can a CJN forget to declare over $3 million? The suspended chief justice acts like he is hiding something. It's my own opinion. I won't join issues with anybody that vents his frustration on my comments. Okay, I think the remaining part is not it's for us. The <laughs> remaining part is as irrelevant as the one you've read. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Yeah, but, but you see the truth. He said the judiciary is flawed. There are three arms of government. The executive, the legislature the judiciary. And the focus of today's discourse is the judiciary being flawed. How do the executive and the legislature fare in this regard? Has, even if the judiciary is flawed, of course, all human institutions are flawed. But is the executive perfect? Has President Buhari put the interest of this country, the lives of the citizens of this country, ahead of his own personal interest? Has he upheld the law? Has he fun functioned the way a validly 
I don't know how to, but a uh, legislator should act. Yeah. So let us speak um, judiciary actually then. But a situation whereby one arm of government interferes with the functioning of another arm goes against the principle of separation and powers and the very idea of the rule of law. The idea of the rule of law is that these things will run automatically, systematically, together. Any, any exercise of power that allows Mr. President to unilaterally remove the CGN, whether they call it suspension, whether they call it removal, anything, the only uh, uh, phraseology or lexicography you want to use to justify it, it's wrong. Something wrong is happening. That's the honest truth. Okay, it was all Wait, my... Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Let's go not be under impressions. The judiciary is flawed. We the executive agree. is flawed. The House of Assembly is flawed. Every, everybody, the system is flawed. But this is not the way to correct the judiciary. This is just an, an open door to chaos. The judiciary is probably the only hope, the, is the only bastion against the tyrannical leanings of this executive. So attacking the judiciary directly, head on in this matter, is in this manner is really dangerous. Okay, Zikora. A lot, of, still a lot of tweets to go through, but, but let's is, end uh, um, the segment with an official, with a statement from the Nigerian Bar Association via their official um, Twitter handle. If we can have that. So many comments. So many comments. The social media is. Uh, it's a world on its own. Okay, now, according to at Nige Bar Association, cool against the Nigerian judiciary and the suspension of the Nigerian constitution won. The news media has been awash this evening with the news of the purported suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Mr. Justice Walter S.C. C. Onoge. Um, to the Nigerian Bar Association unequivocally rejects and condemns this attempted coup against the Nigerian judiciary and evident suspension of the Nigerian constitution by the executive arm of the federal government. The action of the executive portends a slide into anarchy. Okay, so gentlemen, finally, what, what is your take on those um, last tweets I just read before we end this segment? The MBA is a very, very crucial and responsible organization. As an umbrella body of practicing lawyers in the country, I think that they have a key role to play. And I think that um, I commend the step they have taken so far by aptly naming it as what it is, an attempted coup against the Nigerian judiciary and evident suspension of the constitution. It also portends a slide into anarchy, obviously, but I think they should do more than just issue a statement. We want to see more pragmatic and practical action. By the time lawyers say we are boycotting court proceedings, we are sending a strong statement that we will not be part of the institutionalization of legality, of illegality in the legal system. We are arbiters, we are officers in the temple of justice. We have a sacred responsibility to uphold justice as a universal value. If they're able to do that and back these words with action, I think that my conscience will be satisfied. Okay, your last words, Zikor. As you said, it's beyond just making statements on Twitter. It's beyond just releasing official statements. I think the NBA should at this point take a bolder step. The reason why I'll like them to do that is that if they do not it's just the cjn now it could be anybody tomorrow and if the rule of law co collapses in nigeria we are we know how our history we know where we're coming from we know the possibilities of what is going to happen the elections is just three weeks away if the mba if nigerians if concerned nigerians don't stand up now i i, I followed a lot of people calling on youth to move i really think that the anger is one of the is a luxury that can be afforded mostly by young people. I think that this is a time for them to spend that resource on the polity. We cannot 
give a country like this, we cannot set this kind of precedence and let it slide. History will remember all the contributors to it. And by our silence, we will continue contributing. So beyond the NBA, other arms of civil society should actually look into boycotting this move by the government. It is not healthy in any way. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show. Um, Zikora Uwo Wena. We won. We won. Thank you so much. And Uzoma Wachiku, thank you very much. The pleasure has been mine. Well, guys, that's all we have on Social Media Trends. Do follow us and join the conversation online. You can add to us. You can tag us to your comments. And be sure we'll definitely um, get back to you and answer you. Maybe you can even see your tweet on the show. My name remains Inna Peters, and I'll be leaving you guys with Osasu Ibenidio. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Ina, for that insightful section of the weekend show. On the social media trends, we bring you the feedback of everyday Nigerians on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This is where we feel the pulse of everyday Nigerians, their reactions to trending issues. You've watched this past two hours with us here on the weekend show where we've brought to you reactions from everyday Nigerians, politi politicians, activists, lawyers, civil society organizations regarding the suspension of the CJN. Uh, Follow us on social media at Weekend Show NG on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And drop us a comment on our website, www.weekendshowng.com. I would like to reiterate that we invited the three spokespersons of President Mohamed Buhari's campaign and administration. His spokesman, Femi Ade his spokesman Garba Sheo, promised to call in. We called him severally. He did not pick up. Uh, his special advisor media, Femi Adeshino, said he was on campaign. He couldn't attend the show. And finally, Festus Kiyamo, the spokesman of his campaign, said he had no comment. So we tried to have a balance reported. We reached out to his team and they chose not to participate. Next time on the program, we'll bring you our regular programming of the weekend show, which has to do with lifestyle, sports, entertainment and politics. Taking us out today, we have a performer who's going to sing us the national anthem, which is very apt given the situation of our country. Don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back. Arise, O compatriots, Nigeria's call obey to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain to serve with heart and mind one nation bound in freedom Peace and unity Oh God of creation Direct our noble cause Guide our leaders aright Help our youth the truth to know In love and honesty to grow and live in just and true Great love, the heart to take To build a nation where peace and justice shall reign